Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, this is a walk from uh, near Robinson's Galleria Mall in Cebu City up to the Mango uh, Avenue area and uh, chat a little bit about some things that are going on. Uh, first of all, uh, boy, this past uh, week or two have been extremely, extremely busy for me. Uh, different things and uh, in fact, two weeks ago, I thought I was going to have a pretty free week, and then just every day, uh, I had to meet somebody, go pl go someplace, uh, help somebody deal with immigration issues, those types of things. Uh, have chair will travel, and yes, we do use oncoming traffic lanes in the Philippines. If there's nothing coming. Very common to do that. Anyway, if I haven't uh, answered uh, all the comments uh, on a regular basis like I try to do, if I haven't answered some of the emails that I try to, uh, it's because I've just been swamped with things uh, to get done here. And uh, here it is uh, Sunday when I'm doing this and uh, uh, sending John Rowe off, John, John and uh, Cindy Phils to Phoenix. Uh, YouTube channel. They're headed back to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and they went and got their PCR test today and just got alerted that they got negative tests. So anyway, I'm taking possession of, of a couple of his things that he doesn't have room to move back. And I'll tell you more about that uh, in, in coming days, coming videos. First thing I want to cover, I did a lot of research today, tried to find out any updated information concerning whether unvaccinated people can fly into Cebu, Cebu province, Cebu city. And uh, the governor, Gwen Garcia, had stated that she would allow unvaccinated, they would have to go through a period of uh, like, like a five day quarantine and another test. Um, and I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Um, I looked on Philippines Airlines, PAL's website, and they have some information about uh, travel requirements and restrictions, and they do have a listing uh, for unvaccinated. Uh, so if you can find a flight coming directly in, now I'm not going to tell you to fly, to buy those tickets and fly, because things can happen quickly here. Uh, airline can tell you you don't have the proper documents. Uh, customs immigration when you get here can tell you that you don't you're not properly documented. Turn you around, send you back. So what I suggest you do is contact the airlines that you're going with, see what the requirements, restrictions are. Contact the Philippine Embassy nearest you. Find out what their latest information is. I've had a number of people comment and a num number of people uh, share their experiences flying in from different areas, flying in and flying out of the Philippines. So it's, uh, it's a little risky to be traveling. They're, they're, most of the people traveling right now, I think, have, have uh, ties. They have a wife, children, girlfriend, some kind of relationship here. They've been here before. They've got reasons to come back. The, the risk is acceptable to them. and uh, But most of the tourist business is just going to sit back and wait until all the restrictions have finally been dropped and they're sure that they're not going to come back again. Uh, because it is. It's a lot of money to spend uh, to travel and then to be uh, if these governments one day in the coming weeks or months decide to Oh no, we're going to lock down again. There's another variant out there that we're just so afraid of instead of trying to manage it. Today and part of yesterday is, is kind of a cloudy, rainy day, kind of a low pressure area coming across here. Uh, no typhoon, no big storm, but uh, just a little bit of rain off and on. And a little cooler temperatures, which is always uh, acceptable anyway for me. I have adapted well to the warmer, more humid climate, actually cooler climate compared to Phoenix, Arizona, uh, where I lived for many, uh, there in Las Vegas where I lived for many years, the, the desert area that would get very, very hot, but dry. 
dry, very low humidity usually. Life goes on here. Uh, you might, uh, you know, you're able to travel around a bit. Uh, if you're traveling into interzonal, interzonal, where you're crossing into other islands and stuff, each each uh, island might have different requirements and restrictions. But for instance, traveling in in uh, Cebu Island and the cities of Cebu, we're pretty much free to go where we where we want to go. Just get on get on a bus, take a taxi, uh, whatever, and go rent a motorbike and go. The malls and virtually everybody else have stopped asking for quarantine passes, quarantine certificates, what have you. Uh, not, not quarantine certificates, vaccine certificates uh, showing that you're vaccinated. For a while they were discriminating Museum and saying only, uh, and, and, and it had nothing to do with the science because both, both vaccinated and unvaccinated can, can get, get the virus transmitted just as easily had to do with trying to force people uh, to get vaccinated. And anyway, um, pretty much for the last two or three weeks, even though some places still have signs up, we serve vaccinated only. The fact, real life on the street is those businesses need everybody's business. And uh, nobody, I haven't had anybody ask. I was at the Buy Hotel a few days ago for a buffet dinner in the evening and they they did ask for uh, certain documentation um, but there again not uh, and then you had to wear you had to wear gloves you had to wear these plastic gloves that they dispensed out to you to go around and get your food on the buffet which was kind of odd but that's what it was next week the middle of uh, March, uh, on December 16th, Super Typhoon um, Odette, international name Rai, came through the, the Visayas and part of Mindanao, did some horrific damage, uh, did some major damage. I've done a number of videos there. And uh, for instance, our electricity was out for, I think, a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks at least got a generator where I, where I live but they ran out of fuel and then their generator they said was old and was not operating properly it would come on a couple hours a day um, we, we got by we had you know having water water to drink water to wash uh, were important so I'd stocked up on those sorts of things and uh, anyway not 100%, but getting close to that in the city, I think, uh, Mandawi City, the Tri-Cities. Uh, there is a, a Longo Island, which is just very close to, to Mactan Island, that uh, I think they have very little electricity over there yet, and they're, this month they're going to get that set up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you, uh, how, how much do you, are, are you uh, hauling freight? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting here. Oh, resting. Yeah, resting. Well, All right. It's really hot. All right. Is this your wife? No, no, that, that's my friend. Oh, okay. Hey. Are you vlogging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. hey, hello. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, man, thank you. Yeah. I have read that uh, many of the, uh, some of the tourist places like Oslo, where there's whale watching, uh, Pescador Island, which is a diving area off of Mool Bool, over on the west side of uh, Cebu, are open back to uh, tourists, foreign or otherwise, or domestic. And so electric is coming back, and uh, tourist places are opening up, specifically for each and every resort that, uh, that was damaged during the typhoon. You just really need to get online and inquire about those types of situations. Uh, because it is, uh, it's not 100% across the islands that are opened up here even three months after the uh, huge typhoon. There are some issues. I think there's, there are around the world and there's going to be more with the, uh, the supply chain disruption that these last two years of uh, travel lockdowns have created around the world. 
the businesses that were shut down, uh, there are there are a number of things that, more and more things that are out of stock here that uh, just regular over-the-counter pharmacy type thing, things that I used to be able to find very easily here, uh, out of stock, sir, out of stock, sir. I have no idea when we'll get those items back in. Uh, they've had alternative choices, but uh, less effective in, in my particular instance anyway. And uh, seeing a lot more taxis, a lot more taxis out here on the road, so they're getting a little busier, which is nice. Rainy day like today, especially during rush hour, and this, this was rush hour as a matter of fact. Um, they're a little higher demand, but still there's a lot more taxis than there are passengers in most cases. I don't have any trouble finding a taxi any given time. Cebu province, as well as a number of other provinces, are still on risk level two. Uh, there are a few areas on risk level three. I think NCR, the national capital region, region around uh, Metro Manila is on uh, level one, the lowest level, and uh, more things opened up, less requirements. Um, hopefully, and they, they do this every two weeks. They go from the 1st to the 15th, so the 15th, uh, we should get a new risk level. We're, everybody's hoping it'll drop down to one, but uh, they may punish the people and uh, continue level two for a while. But the fact of the matter is, life goes on. People are trying to survive out there, do whatever they can to survive. As far as rental prices, I've, I've heard from a couple of sources that uh, people are trying to start raising their rent already because the, the, the government is starting to open up. The fact of the matter is, is that there are thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of units available, condos, hotel rooms, uh, apartments, houses, and it will be, I think, you know, a lot of people are going to be cautious in traveling uh, for the for the coming many months, I'm sure, until they're sure these governments aren't one more time going to change their mind and uh, disrupt the travel plans. So perhaps at the end of the year, during when the high season starts, the Christmas season, uh, the synagogue season, the festival season, the, uh, the season when many people from the colder climates take their vacations to come to some place like the Philippines. It'll be late next year, late this year, into next year before things start getting really back to normal tourist-wise, I think. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll see you all here soon.